Hello and welcome back to Bossing English with Mr F. In a recent video you would have seen me squiggle like crazy all over this 24 mark question uh, and I did promise that I would come back and look at the 8 mark question here. In a normal exam you'd be doing this at the end of a 2 hour and 15 minute paper and you'd be pretty tired and you'd probably with a bit of luck have 15 minutes to spend on that and you'd probably want to spend about the same amount of time on that. So yeah, we have a poem that we need to read and engage with, but before I do that, I'm going to look at the question. I'll go with yellow. In both November Night Edinburgh and a London thoroughfare 2am, the speakers describe attitudes towards the city at night. And now, the key thing here is, so we, we know what we're looking for, attitudes towards the city at night. But what's nice, and they've changed this fairly recently, what are the similarities and or differences between the methods the poets use to present these attitudes. So if you'll remember, we had the same word present here, and we said that present basically means methods, and methods can be the language they use, the structure, whether the sequence or the layout or the kind of use of a, a rhyme scheme or no rhyme scheme, etc. And the form, if it's a recognisable form, like a sonnet or an elegy or a lyric we'll, we'll come on to that another time and linking all those to the the meaning and we said here the meaning was being directed by feelings about the city at night so what we can see is i've got to find some similarities with uh the longer poem uh the 24 mark poem or differences or a mixture of both so if i find three or four similarities and talk about those a bit that's fine if i find three or four differences that's fine if I do a couple of similarities and a couple of differences, that's fine. As long as I'm talking about attitudes to the city at night and how they're presented. So really the question is, what are the methods? Uh, and you're doing kind of quite slight uh, analysis here. So I, again, uh, you've not got much time. You're probably going to be kind of a bit tired at the end of the exam. It's only eight marks. So you're going to look for big, obvious things. So... Now, I've heard an examiner say that you can actually just look at the titles, but sometimes it's hard to write about titles. They're both set at night. Well, that doesn't get us any further, does it? It's called, you know, you get that in the question. One's about London, the other one's about Edinburgh. They're both cities. It doesn't really get us much further. So I think I'd want to choose things that were a bit meatier that would allow me uh, to, to talk about uh, things, uh, similarities or differences. So... Uh, the night tinkles like ice in glasses, leaves are glued to the pavement with frost, the brown air fumes at the shop's windows, tries the door and sidles past. Uh, I gulp down winter roll. Uh, the heady darkness swirls with tenements in a brown fuzz of cotton wool. Lamps fade up crags, die into pits. Frost in my lungs is harsh as leaves, scraped upon pass. I look up there, a high roof sails at the masthead, fluttering a grey and ragged star. The world's a bear shrugged in his den. It's snug and close in the snoring night and outside like chrysanthemums, the fog unfolds its bitter scent. Well, there are some uh, similarities here. Uh, and I mean, I, I suppose I'm, I'm seeing more differences, aren't I, if I'm honest. This one's got a lot to do with darkness. We, remember, the other poem had a lot to do with the uncomfortable brightness of the light at night that blocked out the moon. Here we've got the heady darkness. Um, a brown fuzz, lamps fade up crags, die into pits. So, I mean, here's a, a quite an obvious difference to do with the too bright that we get in that poem and the glare and the glitters coldly uh, of all the, those cold white lamps. Uh, and I've got a nice thing I could pivot between uh, the way that the darkness is kind of really dominating this poem, whereas the brightness, the unexpected brightness of 2am London is, is dominating that one. Um, this is also about seasonality, frost, you know, we've got leaves uh, uh, and winter rule. Um, so this is more of a seasonality in this poem, whereas the other one is more just to do with, we don't know what season it is, it's more to do with the night uh, and we could explore that. And one of the other key differences here is um, there's a lot to do with distance and uh, the moon is kind of used and, and the, the alienated city and how unfamiliar it becomes at night here we get up a kind of uh, contrast with inner inside and outside uh, so the city at night is one thing for people outside where it's cold raw and, and unpleasant but inside 
The world's a bear shrugged in his den. So we get this metaphor. It's snug and close in the snoring night. So you get this kind of dichotomy between outside and inside. Um, if I wanted to make a structural point, let's have a look. Glasses, frost, windows, past, heady, tenements, cotton wool, pits, leaves, the head star. Well, it's it's more regular. There's a kind of regularity, you know, as I was going to tie that to anything. It might be to the seasonality, but I think that's a harder thing to write about. Probably I'd stick with darkness versus brightness, the seasonality versus maybe uh, the kind of cosmic aspect of having the moon and the inside outside, which you could compare with like the distancing device uh, of the the paradoxical closeness of the moon. I know it and I love it. Uh, and compared to the city close at hand, I might explore that, uh, the way that that's done and, and the personification of the moon to make it seem closer and intimate in the way that you know the in interiors seem a bit more close and intimate here. I guess that could be a similarity or a difference depending on how you frame it. Right, what did I put for this? Let's have a look. I did a... Um, I haven't talked about this, have I? Um, in the past, this is the way I used to teach this, write one long detailed pretzel paragraph with lots of A-B switching, comparing method and link to question keyword. And for similarities and or differences, I said you could do the title, the way the poem, both the titles of both poems, the opening of both poems, the ending of both poems, language, mood, tone devices. It's very, very broad. That idea of methods is very, very broad. Um, but I think hopefully you've seen me doing that just by pulling out the big obvious differences uh, that I found there. OK, let's have a look at uh, what this might look like written down. Both poems use imagery linked to coldness to show how cities at night are unfamiliar places, but for different reasons. Lowell's poem uses a semantic field of coldness, cold white lamps which get it coldly to defamiliarise the city, depicting a strange alien world. The adverb coldly showing how light shines in a menacing way. Whereas McCaig's coldness is less aggressive and sinister, more linked to seasonality, frost, winter or harsh, and something as something to be endured and even sounds pretty, the simile tinkles like ice and glasses, suggesting resemblance to a cocktail hour. So if you look at that, uh, you've got all of that on poem A uh, and all of this on poem B, and it's a nice split between the two, and I'm doing a difference there, and I've kind of talked about similarity and difference here as well. Uh, and hopefully I'm getting into that top uh, level four detailed, um, you know, kind of um, exploratory detailed perceptive analysis there. Lauer's poem exaggerates the distance felt between the city and the speaker by personifying the moon she to show it is somehow closer and more understandable. The verb snow and love showing a simple and direct relationship with the distant satellite in contrast to the near at hand city at night. McKay uses contrast to show a a dichotomy between interior and exterior at night with the metaphor the world's a bear shrugged in his den showing pupils nocturnal hibernations the verb shrugged rhyming internally with the adjective snug emphasizing this cozy retreat from the cold uh, i'd like to think that that would be enough you know with, because of the detail there to get nudged into that seven to eight mark uh, category uh, hopefully that would be the case anyway uh I just wanted to do another quick video on how to compare. Hopefully that's been useful. I'll probably come back with some more stuff on, on, on Unseen and uh, some stuff on Macbeth. So you know what to do with the like button uh, and you could also do something similar to the subscribe button. Uh, more Felicity anon.